Hey, bub. To be honest, I don't know why these guys are wearing masks, but hey, welcome to GDPG. What's up, bub? We're playing some Tales of Zestiria, and uh, this is going to be our new long-term uh, playthrough, because we're going to play through the whole thing. So uh, with us, uh, there, uh, it's, I'm Affinity Chris, we've got Kujo, and then we've got Gagarius here. <laughs> and if you've seen the show, you've seen Kujo already. No, Gagarius. All right. I am Gagarius. Gagarius is new. That broke so many different things. Yeah, well. Uh, Gotta break shit to make shit. Oh, that's gonna blow out my ears while I'm editing. Yeah, it is. I just saw a clip. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta break shit to make shit. The Legend of the Shepherds In a bygone age of myths, when darkness threatened to enshroud the world, it was they who reclaimed light from nothingness. Over and over, as the world plunged into chaos, the legend would come to people's lips and they would pray for salvation. And lo, each time a shepherd would appear to vanquish the darkness once more. But with peace returned, it was never long before the shepherds would vanish. As for where they had gone, no one can truly say. And, as with all things, eventually they faded into legend. Once again, the world faced the threat of the darkness. people began to speak of the shepherds once more. But alas, no shepherd came forth to guide his people to peace. It's so pretty. So pretty. Oh my so, God. so obviously we're gonna we're not gonna talk over cutscenes very much, and mm. if we do, it's only going to be to point out things that are relevant to the cutscene. Yeah, right? interesting too. You know, good, bad. Um, but for a game like this, we figure normally we do talk over cutscenes just because we want to keep conversation flowing. Um, but for this game, especially since it's going to be a long playthrough, we want to make sure that you guys can stick around with the story. Um, yeah. And so we don't miss things because in the story too. At the end of the day, one of the biggest selling points for these games is the story. Yeah, the story it is, is very probably important. what sets the Tales games apart from a lot of other RPGs. Yes. Yep. I knew it! A hero brandishing the sacred blade! This mural is a depiction of the shepherd! <laughs> About time I found it! Nothing on my end, Soray. Miklio! Looks like you beat me this time. This proves the Shepherds have been around since even before the Arrow of Asgard. I knew it! Let's not jump to conclusions just yet. We still don't have definitive proof that this ruin itself is pre-Asgard. It could be an imitation. Seriously? You really think they'd make a fake ruin of this scale? Get real. This doesn't bode well. Wait, isn't that... I think our ruin adventure is over for today.
Come on! This way! Hurry! Okay, so I find interesting um, about what they're talking about. Well, I silence my phone, like everyone else should be. <laughs> my phone's off. Oh, you know, whatever. I do. Sh um, because I play. I forgot how long these cutscenes are in like, yeah, it's okay. the beginnings of the games. It's okay. There's a lot of cutscenes. It is. It is a lot of cutscenes. But that's what, again, makes these games so special is that you, they really want to put the story out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they want to make characters that are. Oh, so okay, that's a this, spell he uses. Yeah, I, I was actually going to say this is actually a pretty good uh, first cutscene because, um, I mean, the, the whole sequence of cutscenes, right? Because we're establishing both character, we're establishing relationships, we're mm -hmm. establishing setting, and now we even just got to see kind of what each of the characters' roles are, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. Saray is going to be a little bit more of the like, you know, fighty swordsman, fighty swordsman, the guy naive. that's in the front that's you know sla hacking and slashing away, and then uh, Miklio, he's the one that's using spells, right? We get this just from the cutscenes before we even b enter battle. Well, yeah. you also know in just their personal relationship, you can see that right. like like Kujo was saying that Saray is going to be a little more you know flighty, not flighty, but a little more naive, naive, strong willed, mm -hmm. and then you see Miklio, who's going to be the more level headed one. Yeah. Um, who has to think before he acts. Yeah. Whereas Sore seems like he just acts before he thinks. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what makes a good protagonist in any game. I, and I think... Sorry. No, you're good. Here. No, no, you're Okay. Good. Uh, and I think starting off with a relationship like that um, sets the tone for the rest of the game. By automatically having Miklio and Sore, mm -hmm. these two characters are going to be very important for, for the entire rest of the story. And I think one of the biggest dramatic elements of this story is going to be between those two. Mm -hmm. um, I totally agree. Totally. Something else that's kind of interesting that's sort of revealed in these first few scenes is that if you look at Saray's attire, Whoa. he's got this brown hair, he's got those <sighs> stupid feather earrings. Sorry, I'm sorry. Not I'm just big. the feather just earrings, just feathers everywhere. Feathers every he has it on his sword just to make sure he knows it's his. Like, <laughs> he's got like a cool little watching. blue shirt, like whatever. It's basically, it's it's the basic human um, fantasy attire. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Miklio is a little bit different. A, he's got some silverish, bluish hair going on. His uh, robes look very ornate and very um, it's a good point, trimmed. Yeah. And it, lo it looks like he's higher up of some sort. Um, plus, adding in the fact that he's a mage, or, or a magic user, rather, um, really does set him apart from the basic fantasy male um, uh, character role. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's take a look around. Kind of reminds me of the Power Rangers. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, I have feathers, so everything's going to have feathers. Yeah. <laughs> and my hair's silver and blue. I'm going to have clothes that are silver and blue. So, Not that that's a bad thing. So I actually have a theory, though, about Saray's attire. Okay. Um, I think the feathers are important, even though they look a little ridiculous, right? I think they're important because they symbolize what Saray becomes. And if you don't know kind of how this story progresses, or if you've never played a Tales game, because they all sort of have a similar Kind of flow of their story. story. I totally um, agree. They generally incorporate, especially Tales of Symphonia, they generally incorporate some element or aspect of religion into the world, and it becomes important, right? Um, and in this game, Saray um, becomes a character known as the Shepherd, which is very like. Which is very uh, like Christian in, in nature, right? Um, and so I think the, the feathers represent sort of an angelic nature, right? Mm hmm. I would totally agree. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see as we get farther in the playthrough, since some of us have already had the pleasure of getting through a little bit of this game. Um, I've only gone through like this much. So. Yeah, I haven't gone through very much myself either. But what could a monster like a hellion be doing in a place like this? So something else that um, it's getting away. Uh, is always something to consider whenever you're starting a new RPG is uh, setting and tutorial introduction off the bat. Are you under? Are you given enough information about the world to interest you without oh, yes. overbearing you with useless information? Are you introduced to characters and maybe a relationship that you immediately want to see flourish and maybe want to see how it develops throughout the game? Mm -hmm. But also tutorial-wise, are you bombarded with help messages for a system that it seems overly complicated? Is it is it drowning you in mechanics? Mm -hmm. The thing about this intro sequence that I kind of like is that off the bat, all it really tells you how to do, attack, and then on the world map, how to move and how to interact with things in the world. Mm -hmm. That's it so and, far. And, and well, we also just learned how to interact in the combat right. um, setting, but all they did was say, 
hit this button and you can attack. Like, yeah. Okay, fair enough. And and the nice thing too is that we don't take any damage until we actually execute what they want us to do in the tutorial. Right. Um, which I think is important. Yeah. Right. And the thing that about this game that I sort of give a little bit of leniency in terms of tutorial messages as opposed to like Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy up until the last couple of games has had a pretty standard system that has carried over for years. All the way up until 10? Yes, Final Fantasy X was basically the last one that had like that basic sort of turn-based system. Mm -hmm. Tales games have never really had that turn-based feel. They've always had the same basic idea of having an action RPG sort of action sequence um, in terms of the combat, while also having a lot of RPG elements that then go into when you're exploring the world or maybe when you're coming across items and such. So, because these are sort of different between each game, there are certain things that are going to be different in terms of mechanics. And Chris, you are doing something really weird with your head. What's up? He's getting through the wonderful so, tutorial so screens. I do want to point out that we quite literally passed maybe about 10 pages of text um, from tutorial. Which is a lot. Both to teach us, oh, this is a treasure chest. This is what they do. Okay, I'm going to go equip that thing. As soon as I enter here and, and enter the equipment section, it goes, okay, this is the equipment section. And then it shows me the five more pages of things. Um, <laughs> things that, again, will not come up till probably later. Right, and while, you know, text for tutorials isn't always the worst, I do think that it's very, very poor design to just uh, Badger your your players. What's the right word? Just just bombard them. It bombards. Yeah, it bombards, yeah. yeah, it's to bombard them with tutorial text. Um, no, it's bad, right? Player. Because when you're first starting a game, no player is going to want to just sit and read, right? They want to jump in. They want to get a feel for the action. And I think and that's a comment on this generation of gamers. It, but it is, but it isn't, right? Like, I I feel like even as a kid growing up in the NES era, I still don't. I appreciate games that make their tutorials intuitive and integrated into the world yeah. rather than just giving me text. I'll read a manual and be happy, but at the same time, I'm playing the game because I want to play the game, not because I want to learn how to play the game. I'd rather be playing a tabletop Before RPG if I'm going to do that. Continue. Let's go ahead and set Miklio to Kujo's controller. Oh, yeah. So, so we get that fun of two player. Yeah. Yes. So, real quick. Um, I totally understand where you're coming from with being able to learn a game as the game plays and not have any blatant hint messages or anything like that. And However, some things they do very well in this. Right. However, with a game like this, in in ter because it, it is an RPG, you know, it's it's not a Final Fantasy game where we know the basics of how an RPG works. This is gonna this is a Tales of game, and yes, they've been around for forever, but still. They still have to sort of introduce those concepts one way or another. Right. And to be honest, considering that it is an RPG and it does have those RPG elements, I would rather just sit and take a second and read through the text. Because in this game, if, if it tries to explain itself via story, like Devil May Cry 4, I'm going to miss I'm gonna miss how some mechanics work, and I'm gonna spend the entire game doing things the more difficult way and not even realizing that there is a better way to do it. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even I'm not even asking them to do it through story, and I, I think that's a, a play style preference, right? Like, you don't mind, but I think most players do mind. Right. Um, and, I think and it depends on the game. You're right. But I would agree with you, Chris, on this. I think a lot of gamers do want to just step into the game mm -hmm. and kind of fluidly include yeah. right. all that and, information. And I'm not asking them to do it through the story, like Devil May Cry, for example. I think what I'm asking for is to do more things like how they introduced the, uh, the combat mechanics initially, right? Where they say, push this button to perform this action, and I push that button and suddenly, oh, I do that thing, right? Um, so I, I think that that's better because the player's at least engaging with the game. They're not sitting at a static screen until they've read through something. That's fair. And that's where, the fighting, that's where the fighting really comes in really nicely. They just give you a quick bar of text to be like, hey, try this. And I can still run around and experiment with things during that time. Like, right, I don't which have is to great. do what exactly. they tell me to which do. Which is great. Which is very, very good. Yeah, I, I think that that's a good example of, of good design, and then the rest is bad design. With the tutorials. Yes. Yeah, I think, I th I think that's a, an apt statement. What I do really like about this game, though, whenever you come across an enemy, it doesn't, it doesn't like fade into a different sort of like battle scene or whatever. It's literally where you are. 
That is I, a first for a game like this, and I think that's awesome. It's it's not the first time I've ever well, seen that. Well, maybe not for a game like this, but um, I think for me, experiencing this is the first time I've experienced I, this. I, 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 do, I do really like that. It makes the battles feel integrated into the world, and I think that's that's actually really cool. There should yeah. be some cool loot in this one. Oh, and there is. Yes. <laughs> It's like you knew. Like a pedestal, man. No, when you see a pedestal, and there you go, more feathers. And who's taking it? Miklio. You like, have enough he, feathers. Dude, give me the goddamn glove. He is a piss party. He's like, I'm gonna rain He's on your parade. He's a piss party. A piss party. He's, He's pees. pissing out in the fire, man. He's everywhere. You know, Soray is this just is the trying urine to dungeon, get people. a good campfire going, and then Miklio comes out and be like, Hey, man, is that a campfire? Oh, I see you have more wood there. Let me urinate on them. <laughs> That's what he's doing. He's urinating on logs. Hey, watch out! Don't scare me like that. Sorry about that. Now, I want to talk about a couple things that I've noticed. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I feel like these structures, right? If you look around at them... They have like this sort of like, like I said, it's kind of like Aztec Inca, you know. Yeah, definitely. It has this, this, this really like foreign kind of Spanish oh, native yeah. feel to them. Um, kind of Road to El Dorado kind of has, you know. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And what's, <laughs> what's crazy is then they have, like they talked about Asgard earlier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so there, and this is something like we were talking about earlier, where Tails really likes to have fun with their mythologies, and they really like to include religion in those mythologies. So I'd like to see. Oh, we have a choice here. It's obviously invisible bridge. Yeah, right. There's some dust on it, right? I really hope that like if you chose the other one, they try and walk, and then they just fall. Yeah, farther nah. down. Just Mi to Depending on what you do. I think what would have happened is Miklio would have made more fun of us and be like, yeah. you're dumb. You're dumb. Yeah, Basically, right. yeah. Well, that also lends itself to another staple of the Tales series, which is having those mini cutscenes um, where yeah, of interest detection. our action directly influenced the outcome of that mini conversation. Who knows? Maybe if we did pick the wrong choice, the little mini conversation that follows up after that would have been like, dude, seriously? I, I do actually wonder if they have a, um, a hidden like relationship system in this game, because they, they had that in Symphonia, yeah, right? Yeah, they did, and that was and, great. And there are plenty of scenarios in this game that I've encountered so far where you can choose to interact with someone in a certain order, or mm -hmm. you can make right. very slight decisions. Well, and now games, I mean, games are getting so popular now where it's make your own decisions, Yep. Or it's like, hey, if you do this, you're going to have an affected relationship, which I think is a positive step forward for like RPGs in general. Yeah, it does, It's not like you're just playing through a story now. It's like now you get to kind of make a choice. Yeah. And uh, whether or not these choices really do impact, we'll have to see as the game goes on. Yeah, yeah. It didn't I'll give you like one of those... The choices you make in this game will affect future outcomes. And, you know? and I don't think they need to, but no. we'll, we'll see when the time exactly. comes. Exactly, but look at this passed out chick here. <laughs> so, so <laughs> we're... we're <laughs> nice transition. Yeah, so fair battle. game. A transition. Wow. <laughs> wow, you heard it. Wow. Okay. See, anyway, we're 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 gonna see what's up with the human girl in the next episode. So okay. uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more. We're gonna be in this for a while. So we hope uh, people enjoy this. See you in the archives. Bye. Yeah. Why is it so and bad? And wants Jeez. to like hit on passed out chicks. He said fair game. <laughs> that was a... Oh, sure, a joke. Ironic yeah. coming from a gay man. Oh, so what? Gay people can't be trashy dudes? <laughs> like, is that where we're going Have with Have you this? heard of Grinder?